felt great. Beautiful. Looking good, man. Might be a real, it might be something special. First off, the SHA-256 algorithm, which stands for Secure Hash Algorithm 256, is a member of the SHA-2 cryptographic hash functions designed by the NSA and first published in 2001. SHA-256, like other hash functions, takes any input and produces an output, often called a hash, of fixed length. The output of a hashing algorithm such as SHA-256 will always be the same length, regardless of input size. Specifically, the output is, as the name suggests, 256 bits. Moreover, all outputs appear completely random and offer no information about the input that created it. The Bitcoin network utilizes the SHA-256 algorithm for mining and the creation of new addresses. Who is Satoshi Nakamoto? What does Satoshi Nakamoto mean? Out of respect for their anonymity, it would be rude to speculate in a video about who Satoshi Nakamoto is likely to be. The reality is, it's not important. Let me explain. Any human being can be attacked. Jesus could come back from the dead, and there would be haters. Therefore, the Satoshi Nakamoto approach neutralizes the natural human herd behavior, exacerbated by the media, to attack and discredit. This is a very important part of Bitcoin's success thus far. Also, from a security perspective, those who wish to dock Satoshi Nakamoto in a video are essentially putting his, or her, or their life at risk for the sake of views. As a genius who has produced an innovation not just from a technical perspective, but also from a monetary perspective, they should be treated with more respect than that, in my opinion. As for the name Satoshi Nakamoto, I would speculate that it is a homage to Tatsuaki Okamoto and Satoshi Obana, two cryptographers from Japan. There is another reason for the name, but that is confidential. In 1996, the NSA's cryptology division of their Office of Informational Security Research and Technology published a paper titled, How to Make a Mint, The Cryptography of Anonymous Electronic Cash first publishing it in an MIT mailing list, and later, in 1997, in the American University Law Review. One of the researchers they reference was Tatsuaki Okamoto. Most of the crypto market is a scam. By the way, this was predicted very early on in the Bitcoin talk forums. Check out this interaction for November 8th, 2010. If Bitcoin really takes off, I can see lots of get-rich-quick imitators coming on the scene. Gitcoin, Nickcoin, Wickcoin, Tickcoin, Shitcoin. Of course, the cheap imitators will disappear as quickly as those 1990s internet currencies, but lots of people will get burned along the way. To which crypto OG Gavin Anderson replies, I agree. We're in the Wild West days of open source currency. I expect people will get burned by scams, imitators, Ponzi schemes, and price bubbles. Be no, no, no. Be connect! Wow! Be connected! Oh. Fuck off. <laughs> I don't think there's a whole lot that can be done about scammers, imitators, and Ponzi schemes besides warning people to be careful with their money, whether dollars, euros, or bitcoins. Now, on the one hand, lack of regulation is more meritocratic, as you don't have to be an accredited investor just to get access. On the other hand, it means that crypto is, as Gavin said, a Wild West environment with many cowboys in the desert. Be careful. This is the same with most online courses, particularly the how to get rich quick courses. However, with crypto, you have an exponential increase in the supply of victims during the bull cycles, so it is particularly prevalent during those times. In addition to this, leverage trading exchanges, which are no different to casinos, prey on naive retail traders who think they cannot smart professional traders with actual risk management skills and then they can outsmart the exchanges themselves who have an informational advantage as well as an incentive to chase stop losses and liquidate positions. We know that the Fed and central banks around the world have printed themselves into a corner. Quantitative easing was the band-aid for the great financial crisis in 2008 and more recent events have propelled the rate of money printing to absurd levels. This means that all currencies are in a race to zero and it becomes a game of who can print more fiat faster. The powers that be know that this fiat frenzy is unsustainable and that more and more people are becoming aware that it is a debt-based system based on nothing. The monetary system devised by bankers for bankers in 1913 on Jekyll Island and supercharged in 1971 
is fairly archaic and also does not allow for meritocratic value transfer. We know that fiat printing itself increases inequality. They obviously know this as it is by design. The issue for them is that more and more people are starting to become aware of this. Moving to a modernised monetary system will allow those who have rigged the rules of the game for the last century to get away scot-free. It will also pave the way for a new, wealthy and more tech-literate elite to emerge, again predicted in the Bitcoin talk forums. Now, back to the powers that be. There are 150 and they're all men that run the world, period, full stop. They control most of the important assets. They control the money flows. And these are not the tech entrepreneurs. Now, they, they are going to get rolled over over the next five to 10 years by the people that are really underneath pulling the strings. And when you get behind the curtain and see how that world works, what you realize is it is unfairly set up for them and their progeny. As we have previously discussed, Bitcoin provides a natural transition to central bank digital currencies, CBDCs, and what I would describe as Finance 2.0. What are the benefits of CBDCs for the state? More control, easier tax collection, more flexibility in monetary policy, i.e. negative interest rates, and generally a more efficient monetary system, i.e. cash infrastructure. But this leads us to the kicker, which is the war on cash. The cashless society was a fantasy just a few years ago. However, now it doesn't seem so far-fetched. No comment. What about Bitcoin? While well, Bitcoin has incredibly strong network effects, it is the most powerful computer network in the world. But what about Bitcoin's reputation? The bankers hate it, even Warren Buffett hates it. Precisely, and the public hates bankers. Sure, the investing public respects Buffett, but the general public perception of anyone worth $73 billion is not exactly at all-time highs right now, and made record wealth inequality. In the grand scheme of things, the market cap of Bitcoin is currently around $179 billion. For example, the market cap of gold is around $9 trillion, which is 50 times the market cap of Bitcoin. Money has certain characteristics, as we can see here. In my opinion, what makes Bitcoin unique is the fact that it has a finite total supply, 21 million, and a predictable supply schedule via the halving events every four years, which cuts in half the rate at which new Bitcoin is released into circulation. Clearly, with these properties, it seems likely that Bitcoin could act as a meaningful hedge against inflation. One of the key strengths of Bitcoin is the fact that the network is decentralized. Many people don't know that PayPal originally wanted to create a global currency similar to crypto. Many people don't know this, but the mission of PayPal was to create a, a global currency that was independent of interference by uh, these you know, corrupt cartels of banks and uh, governments that were uh, just, you know, debasing their currencies. And we, uh, uh, we succeeded at building something very economically very powerful, enabled many small businesses, we're super proud of it, but we, we never achieved the mission. Overall, a speculative thesis would be the following. Satoshi Nakamoto is one of the most important entities of the 21st century and will accelerate the next transition of human civilization. Trusted third parties are security holes. Bitcoin is the catalyst for Finance 2.0, whereby value transfer is conducted in a more meritocratic and decentralized fashion. In 1964, Russian astrophysicist Nikolai Koloshev designed the Koloshev scale. At the time, he was looking for signs of extraterrestrial life within cosmic signals. The scale has three categories, which are based on the amount of usable energy a civilization has at its disposal and the degree of space colonization. Generally, a Type 1 civilization has achieved mastery of its home planet. A Type 2 civilization has mastery over its solar system. And a Type 3 civilization has mastery over its galaxy. We humans are a Type 0 civilization on this scale. Nonetheless, our exponential technological growth in the last few decades indicates that we are somewhere between Type 0 and Type 1. In fact, according to Carl Sagan's interpolated Karshev scale and recent global energy consumption, we are about 0.73. Physicist Freeman Dyson estimated that within 200 years or so, we should attain Type 1 status. As a technology that, through its decentralization, links entities globally and makes value transfer between humans more efficient, Bitcoin could provide a key piece of our progression as a civilization. What are your thoughts? Is it true or false? For more compounded, valuable content, subscribe and like.